Good afternoon, New Missouri. I'm Jordan Berger, and welcome to KOMU 8 News at Noon. Breaking news this afternoon. A student was shot and injured at a high school in Ocala, Florida this morning. Officials say the student was shot in the ankle and taken to a local hospital. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says the suspected shooter was another student and is in custody. It's still unclear if the shooting was intentional. Following the incident, students were dismissed for the day. This comes on the 19th anniversary of a mass shooting at Columbine High School in Littleton, Colorado. What was at the time the worst school shooting in history is now something that happens often in the United States. Two Columbine seniors, 17-year-old Dylan Cleboyd and 18-year-old Eric Harris, went on a shooting spree inside the school, killing 12 of their classmates and a teacher. 20 others were wounded. Several recent tragic events inspired one organization to rally for safer school environments. The National Education Association is encouraging schools around the country to rally for safer schools. The Columbia chapter decided to wear orange and white shirts with signs reading hashtag never again. One student got up early this morning to show support, saying enough is enough. I mean, just think it could come to your school. This is an important issue. It affects all of us every day. Um, it's, it's your job or your responsibility as a, an American citizen to come out and support safety for students. Several students plan on rallying again at Providence and Broadway and Providence and Nifong from 3.45 to 4.15 p.m. this afternoon. Wells Fargo's financial relationship with gun makers and the National Rifle Association has cost them business with a major U.S. union. The American Federation of Teachers notified the bank that it's dropping Wells Fargo as a recommended mortgage lender for members. This comes after Wells Fargo rejected the union's call to cut lending ties with or impose new restrictions on firearm business partners. And others, well, Wells Fargo News, the company has agreed to pay a hefty fine for violating U.S. banking regulations. The bank will pay $1 billion to settle charges tied to its mortgage and auto lending business. The bank has admitted to selling auto insurance to customers who did not want or need auto insurance. It also admitted to charging thousands of customers unnecessary fees in order to lock their interest rates on their home mortgages. Wells Fargo is the nation's largest mortgage lender. Overnight, the Justice Department released memos fired FBI Director James Comey wrote after meetings with President Trump. NBC's Tracy Potts has details on what they said. New overnight from the Comey memos. Tracy. And you saw the redactions as some portions of those memos are blacked out. Members of Congress will get unredacted memos at a secure location later today. The Democratic National Committee announced today as well they are suing Trump's campaign, Trump's son, his son-in-law, the Russian Federation, and WikiLeaks, saying they conspired to help Trump win the 2016 presidential election. Arizona teachers voted to walk off the job. It's the state's first teacher strike in 40 years. The president of the Arizona Education Association says nearly 80% of teachers and educators voted in favor of a walkout. Organizers said they will place no limitations on the length of the walkout. Last week, Governor Doug Ducey announced they announced a teacher pay hike of 20% over two years. But after initial optimism, major grassroots groups pulled their support, saying the plan, calling the plan unsustainable and unclear. And not only that, we have crumbling public school infrastructure here right now. We have kids sitting in broken desks, studying out of 25-year-old textbooks in a room with a leaky ceiling, and that's unacceptable. 80% of Arizona's more than 1 million students will be affected by that walkout. Following a national manhunt, a Minnesota grandmother accused of shooting and killing two people, including her husband, is behind bars. 56-year-old Lois Rice, you see her here, she was arrested last night in South Padre Island, Texas. The arrest was based on a tip to U.S. Marshals. Police say Rice killed her husband back in March, then traveled to Florida to kill a woman who looked like her, all to the identity of that woman. 700 pounds of dynamite was stolen in Pennsylvania, and now the contracting company has had its blasting permit suspended. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives is offering a $20,000 reward. On Wednesday, the Bureau revealed that more explosives were stolen previously than the estimated 640 pounds. Friday, the explosives were stored in a locked truck trailer at the worksite, and on Monday, a worksite security discovered the trailer door was open and the locks were missing. 
The company could face fines or even criminal charges, according to the Bureau. Today, agents are looking for the missing dynamite, working with the Department of Homeland Security in case this involves terrorism, and also checking the explosives black market. An unexploded World War II bomb has been diffused and removed from a central area of Berlin today. Police shut down the main train station as a precaution. The bomb was found during recent construction work. Some 10,000 residents and workers were forced to leave almost a square mile area where bomb experts diffused the 1,100-pound British bomb dropped during the war. They destroyed it in a small controlled explosion. German rail operator Deutsche Bahn said trains were prevented from stopping at the busy station for over an hour. And visitors will be able to say a final farewell to former First Lady Barbara Bush today. The wife of President George H.W. Bush and mother of President George W. Bush is lying inside St. Martin's Episcopal Church in Houston. Large crowds are expected to say farewell to the lady, her family called the Enforcer. A private funeral is scheduled for tomorrow. Let's go ahead and get a check of our weather with our very own Tim Schmidt. And thankfully, right. it's starting to feel more like April. Absolutely, it is. <laughs> All right, Tim, thank you so much. A mid-Missouri community is in mourning after four kids from the same family died in a house fire yesterday. Fire crews showed up around 1 a.m. but couldn't get anybody out. Four young boys, ages 14, 8, 5, and 4, were alone in their Lake Ozark home when the fire erupted. Their parents got back just in time to see the house fully engulfed in flames. Heat from the fire was so strong, firefighters could not get in right away, and strong winds could have played a role in how quickly it intensified. Sad. Sad. Um, even though I didn't know him very well, hardly at all, just knowing that they lost two kids. So. The kids attended the School of the Osage, which released a short statement on Facebook saying additional counseling support will be available for students today. A scary moment at the state capitol after Senator Maria Chappelle Nadal received a mysterious envelope. She tweeted that it was a cancer-causing pesticide and thanked first responders and Senate members. She also tweeted, let me be clear, the coward that sent the envelope made a grave mistake. There's no way in hell I'll be intimidated by a fool. Unfortunately, those of us who are in public office and the public eye receive threats like this oftentimes because of our advocacy for issues that are really important. A Cole County hazmat team came in to help. Chappelle Nadal moved to another office to continue her work. Boone County residents are busy filling up their passports, but not with stamps, instead with cycle of socialization events. The passports are part of a journey toward inclusive excellence, a program dedicated to increasing how accepting the community is of each other's differences. Children, professionals, retirees, and even dancers celebrated their progress at a mixer. Throughout their journey, participants get exposed to their own biases and how to interrupt them when they come up. If you have a brain, you have a bias, period. So that does not exclude anyone. We all have this work to do. It's not too late to start your own journey. People can request a passport at any time and join the group at their next celebration in August. Take a live look over the Missouri River near Rocheport. It's 12:10. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back everyone. There's new video that surfaced taken from inside that Southwest Airlines flight that had an engine explode, taking the life of one of its passengers. Flight attendants worked to keep passengers calm while trying to save the passenger who was partially pulled out of a window. NBC's Tom Costello has the latest on that investigation. The terrifying moments of that was NBC's Tom Costello. Flight attendants say it's important to pay attention during those safety demonstrations and wear your oxygen mask correctly. Also, place the mask on yourself before helping other passengers. We're going to take a short break. Before we go, you're looking live over your capital city. It's 1220. You're watching KMU8 News at noon. Coverage you can count on. Welcome back, everyone. Actress Amy Schumer has a new film out this week in which she plays a curvy girl who struts around with limitless self-esteem. Here's this week's box office preview with NBC's Raphael Seth. Here's a look at what we're following for KMU8 News First at 5. We'll have the latest on a shooting at a high school in Florida, plus area teachers hold a rally to commemorate the anniversary of the Columbine shooting. That's coming up at 5 o'clock. Tim. And your forecast for... Look at a little of this. A Western Michigan family has welcomed not only their 14th child, but their 14th baby boy. 
The newborn doesn't have a name yet, but his parents have plenty of helpers. There are 13 other children, all boys. Is this guy the end of the line? The dad says, probably so. You know, I actually looked it up, and the chances of having 14 boys consecutively is like 1 in 16,000. We had all girls in my family up until me, and then now we've had all boys in the family of this new generation. It's been crazy. That's our time for now. On air, online, on Facebook, on Twitter.